Now this one here has won a number of awards, Dan. What's it called? It has. I mean, you can see these two right here, and uh, we'll talk about that in a second. But this is the Pipistrelle Virus SW, and it looks like virus. And then one of their other planes looks like sinus. And Americans know that those aren't great words, but uh, these folks are coming from uh, Eastern Europe, and they pronounce it virus and sinus. I guess that's a way to get around those ugly words. But this, but not this particular airplane, but one very much like this, two times won a NASA efficiency award. In fact, one year they won a $165,000 prize. It was that significant, uh, and it just shows. You can see the airplane is terribly clean. It obviously works really well too. Now we're talking an SW here, which I presume means short wing, but the ones that I've seen have got like glider wings on them. Big long wings on them and lovely compound curves. This has some of that too. It looks a little less because it is the SW for short wing. And that's probably a, conce uh, a, a technique to appeal to Americans who typically, unlike Europeans, aren't as used to long wing, long gliding aircraft. The one of these that I flew earlier was a motor glider, I think with about a 45 foot span, and that thing would glide and glide and glide. It was really a lot of fun for someone who's a soaring pilot like myself, but if you don't have that in your background, they can be a little hard to get on the ground because they just don't want to come out of the sky. That's a good thing, but when you're trying to land it, uh, it's hard to get down on the ground. So the SW helps in that regard. They also working on something in electric uh, power as well, Matt? Well, they do. They have. They also have another. They've got several different models, and one of them is called the Taurus, which is like the Ford car, uh, both in the way it's pronounced and spelled. And that one is a literally looks like a sailplane, and it has a gasoline engine, but it has also done some considerable flying with electric power. And I know they are planning to use that in some of their other airplanes. Probably not this SW, is my guess, but they are one of the ones that's on the leading edge of the development of electrical propulsion units, as the term goes, for these kind of LSA. Now, this airplane, is it on the light sport list now? It is not today. Uh, the ones that are in the country so far are being sold under uh, Amateur Built, and that's how they were constructed, but they are right on the edge of getting that approval. One of the things that held them back is this airplane has formally been made in Slovenia and Slovenia does not have a bilateral agreement that's a bunch of gov government gobbledygook but what it means is if you don't have if that country of origin does not have a bilateral agreement with the US then you cannot sell it as a light sport aircraft so they are now setting up uh, uh, preparations to make these airplanes in Italy they'll ship to Italy some kits and they'll fully build them there and Italy does have a bilateral agreement and that is a technique being used by some other companies successfully so they'll be able to get in the market and we expect that uh, sometime later this year I'm told. Um, this airplane with its glider background must mean that it's a, a lot of composites in it? It's an all composite and a lot of carbon fiber in this. And I, I just, if you look upon the airplane as your camera will later show, it's just got smooth, beautiful lines everywhere. And uh, I love their compound wings. They're just a work of art. But that comes from their sailplane background, which is common in Eastern Europe and Europe uh, that so many of these companies have learned how to make very efficient sailplanes because that kind of flying in Europe is extremely popular. So they've just used those techniques on power airplanes. But you can even see up here on the wing, as we look up here, you'll see a, a spoiler, a wing spoiler. And, and this is a lift killing device that helps you get this thing down when it wants to glide so far. Because even the short wing one, I don't have a handle on it, it's a good glide performance, but it's very substantial. And what kind of power are they using on uh, this airplane? Well, this particular one is sold with either the 80 or 100 horsepower Rotax 912 ULS. And uh, the electric stuff that we mentioned earlier, that's still in the planning, so that's not what they're offering today. Uh, but their popular Rotax engine makes this thing work really well. And frankly, it's so efficient, I think the 80 would be an excellent choice, although I know a lot of pilots prefer to have 100 horsepower. Now, this unit here that we're looking at is in a tricycle gear, but I believe I've also seen it in a tail track. Well, I don't know if they make the Virus that way, Dave, but they do make the, uh, the Cenus definitely was made that way, and I suspect this one too. Uh, and there's a lot of pilots that like it that way, and a nose wheel is an extra little bit of extra drag. They're very drag conscious, so of course they would make one that's even cleaner. And I, I'm sure you can order it both ways. So well, let's have a look at the interior, because it really looks to be finished off nice. It's really done well. Let's yeah, go have a look. Some Italian heritage into it, the way that it's finished off. Isn't this pretty in here? And you know, it looks looks a little cramped, doesn't it? I mean, I'm not a real big tall guy, but we can fix that. Watch this. Pull up on a knob here between my legs and just push forward with my feet and look how far out that goes. 
I am now legs completely straight. So that's an adjustment of uh, better than a foot, I would say, of rudder pedal adjustments, and it's done on both sides. Here's the knob I was pulling right here. You pull up and you just pull with that handle and the rudder pedals come back towards you. Now I won't be able to get them to go back the other way because you push with your feet, so, so we'll do that another time. But all over, this is a very comfortable seating airplane. It's got this uh, uh, the structure right here. Uh, let your legs relax right on the surface. Uh, you could sit in this airplane a long time, and that's probably a good thing because all of their airplanes are capable of soaring flight. And in fact, that's why we got this little speaker right over my right shoulder here. When you turn the engine off, take your headset off, stow it back here behind the uh, seats where there's some luggage area, and you don't need to have a headset on clamp it against your ears while you're flying around with the engine off, which you could probably do all day on a good day. What kind of control systems are we using in this area? Very conventional controls, joystick on both sides, push to talk on top, nicely leather covered here. Again, very nice execution throughout. And uh, dual rudder pedals, and nice shiny rudder pedals. It'll show up in your camera real well. And you can see right up here on the top, there's a little lever. That's the uh, toe brakes on both sides. So you've got regular conventional steering, but you've also got toe brakes. Even though this is kind of a long wing guy for even the short wing model, it'll still maneuver around nicely on the airport given all these controls. And uh, flaps on it, Dan? Well, I've got a bunch of controls right here in the center. Here's the flaps, very conventional. Uh, push, to, push to detent button right here. Up they come, making that sound, makes it very easy to tell where you're at. But there's another flap handle, except that it's not a flap handle. This one up here, which comes down and just goes to one position, uh, is the spoilers that we saw out on the wing, which kills the lift and allows you to get this airplane down on the ground a little easier. So I'll put those back up here and retract them. They clip into place there with a nice small clip. And moving forward here, we've got trim right here in the center. And that's nicely marked and it's accessible. All these controls are accessible by the pilot and uh, by the occupant of either seat. Throttle, choke, and then as we go up the panel here, we see all our circuit breakers and light switches and so forth. And as we come up the panel, now there's two different versions. This is called the big panel. And indeed, it's got plenty of room here for the Dynon 100 and the Dynon 120 and a few other small uh, uh, analog gauges. But they make a smaller one that's eh, roughly like this so that you get even more room in here. But boy, I've got, I've got room to move my legs around in here. This, and that's something I like to do. I don't like to be all cramped in where I can't even move. I can't stay in the airplane very long. Yeah? This one I could stay in for a while. But here's another cool thing. As I'm sticking my arms out here, it seems like i got a lot of room. Well, you can do that in flight. You can have these doors closed, obviously. You can have them open just like we've got them here. Or you can just take them off. And to the ultralight pilot in me and those that watch your videos, uh, that's a real nice thing. I love the idea of that. There's a little tiny pin over here behind my hand. Right now, this is being held up. It's not coming down on me. Pull down on that pin, and down comes the door. But even that, even with that there, I've got plenty of room. A couple of pretty big guys could fit in this airplane. Very nice. But just just everything. The nice little wood handle here on the door latch mechanism, which latches fore and aft. That's a nice secure arrangement there. Uh, all of this execution is really nicely done. There's a lot to admire about this airplane. And this company, as we mentioned earlier, has got several different models, so you can expect this kind of execution on all of them. And what kind of uh, fuel capacity does it have then? Well, it comes with 15 gallons, but there's also a 25 gallon option. And these wings come off. Now, I don't know if your camera can really show it, but you can see two pieces here uh, with a dividing line down the center. And on the front of this, if your camera can show this, I can't see it here, but your camera probably can. This is the main pin that holds this in, and there's one on the other side as well. So these sort of knife together like this, and as they get put into position then and are pinned in, they're not coming out, but you can also check it at any time just to be sure before you launch that you had done all the right stuff. When you disconnect that, the fuel's out in the wings, so there's a nice disconnect over here. I don't, again, I don't know if your camera can see it, but all the fuel lines disconnect, and there's a little uh, electrical plug up in there, and that comes out. That sends fuel information to the Dynon instruments, but when all of that comes out, then you can pull the wings off. They say they like to use three people just to make sure it doesn't tip. It can be done with two. It takes about 30 minutes to pull the wings off. So this long wing thing could be put in a hangar with some uh, proper holders for the wings and take up a lot less space.
What kind of performance do we get out of uh, the airplane then? Well, this thing is just clean and slick. So, uh, running the nine, Rotax 912 on it, uh, their factory literature says 115 knots. I can easily believe it. And I'll bet you if you nose this thing over, it'll really get going. So, if we want to get a little more information on the airplane, then where would we go? Well, just remember the name of the airplane, Pipistrel. Sounds hard, but it's not bad. P-I-P-I-S-T-R-E-L. But then it's dot S-I. That's because it comes out of Slovenia today, and that's their national code. So Pipistrel dot S-I. And do you have a flight report on this one, Dan? I haven't flown this one. I did fly the motor glider version a couple of years ago, and I have a report on that. Well, I look forward to getting one of these on there, and that'll all be on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.